Valerie Leon was born on the 12th of November 1943 in Hampstead, London. She attended Channing School for Girls in Highgate and then went on to the College of Distributive Trades in Charing Cross. So what happened with me, I was incredibly stage struck, always hanging around stage doors, um, but I got the opportunity to audition for RADA, you know, one of the best acting schools in London. But I, um, well, I have to confess I didn't get in. By the early 1960s, Valerie would leave college and become a trainee fashion buyer. I actually worked for a wholesaler first called Dorita. I was, in fact, I was selling to the buyers from department stores and then I left, became an au pair, came back, went to Harrods as uh, a trainee fashion buyer. She would also make her first stage appearance. I played to him one day, saw an ad in the stage and went off and uh, got the job. I think they only took me because I looked pretty because, I mean, all the other, all the other chorus girls and indeed some of the men, I mean, I, I, I was taller than all of them. In 1966, Valerie would appear in the West End musical production of Funny Girl. I was lucky and, uh, you know, at the time, one, one just didn't realise. I, I, I mean, yes, I spent ages, I suppose, putting the makeup on and doing the bit and everything, but uh, basically I was actually a very shy person. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? Valerie would also start making her first film and television appearances. As a result of Funny Girl, I was able to get an agent who then got me into television. Something's gotten hold of my heart Deep in my soul and my senses apart Something's gotten into my life Cutting its way through my dreams like a knife Turning me up, turning me down Making me smile Breathe in. In a world that was more, I once lived in a time that was peace with no trouble at all. But then you came my way, and a feeling unknown shook my heart, made me want you to stay. All of my nights and all of my days. By the late 1960s, Valerie would start appearing in numerous Carry On films. Sound like it was something shameful to go into a nudist camp. I tell you, it's the most healthy, natural thing in the world. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, my mate and I were wondering if you could... Yes? Well, we were looking for... Yes? Uh, tube of toothpaste, please. <laughs> Behold the symbol of perpetuity. It is called Aphrodisia. Aphrodisia? Ah, then you must be Aphrodisiacs. No, we are known as the Lubby Dubbids. I'll suck on that. Oh. Is, it, is it bad, Miss Darling? Oh, yes. I can give you a jab to kill it for a bit if you like. Oh! Triplets? First, did you? Yes, she did. And she was absolutely wonderful. Three little darlings. Three darlings. Uh, uh, uh. Pudding club. <laughs> <laughs> we, on this festive occasion, to enjoy feasting and frivolity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As is our wont. And I won't if you won't. <laughs> I've done all I can at this end. Surely you can understand that. No, but I might do if you'd stop being so darn secretive and tell me what the job's really about. It's a publicity campaign, that's all. To publicise what? Perkham. Having a sort of competition to go with it. Oh, like spot the boobs. What? Miss Patricia Potter! Thank 
you, Miss Potter. She would also star in the popular High Karate television adverts. High Karate is a cool, soothing lotion. <gasps> Drives women wild. Makes men irresistible. That's why every pack of High Karate contains indispensable instructions on self-defense. High Karate aftershave. Be careful how you use it. I was totally late for that audition, I'll never forget, and um, I arrived doing the dizzy blonde bit, although I was brunette, and um, the first director, I think it was uh, uh, Terence Donovan, the first commercials I did were in black and white, and then it was one for every Christmas for about six years, it was quite extraordinary, and, and I opened car showrooms and all sorts of things as the karate girl. If a man uses too much, he's asking for trouble, and usually finds it. Because just one whiff drives women wild. Hiya! Makes men irresistible. Hiya! Hiya! To have a tall, busty girl chasing a little man, it's now not politically correct as such. High karate aftershave. Be careful how you use it. In 1974, Valerie would marry TV producer Michael Mills. He was much older than me, and so people said he was a father figure. I think when I was younger, I was incredibly neurotic, and I suppose because my father had died when I was quite young. Maybe I was looking for a father figure, I don't know, but uh, he was very kind, and, uh, and he was very patient, and with all my neurosis, and um, we eventually married four years to the day after meeting. I think Michael wanted to marry me way before I thought of marrying him. I decided to marry him and, uh, and we went on to have two wonderful children. I got married at uh, Marylebone Registry Office and I wore a blue velvet suit, a long skirt and a jacket. And although it was the registry office, it was, it was a very nice occasion. And I always remember coming out and Derek Nimmo throwing confetti all over me. And, uh, and, and then on the steps are all the press photographers because, of course, the 70s was my time. During the 1970s and 1980s, she would appear in numerous popular films and television programmes of the time. of her dreaming alone, dreaming of things far different from those around her, a land far away in miles and years, yet close to her heart. No scheming and malignant priesthood, no repressive archaic laws or endless rituals of death, a land where love is the divine possession of the soul. That'll be the day. I do have a soft spot for Roger Moore though. I, I worked with him on The Saint, I worked with him on The Persuaders where he directed my episode. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, signor, signora. You have a reservation for me, the name is Sterling. Ah, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Sterling, book from Cairo. That's right. We have suite A5 for you, a sitting room and two bedrooms. And The Spy Who Loved Me in 1977 where I got to go to Sardinia for the filming. Thank you. Excellent. I was 
just lucky to work with two bonds, but Sean was, is known as the definitive bond, as you know. I, I think I was very, very privileged to work with him and to go to the Bahamas for Never Say Never Again. Um, so we did share some fun times together, w w which was lovely. And uh, he's, he's, he was an incredible man. And, and like everyone says, he was the definitive bond. What are you hoping to catch? Something about six foot two, 190 pounds with brown eyes. Well, why bother going to see? <laughs> Let me help you. Mr. Bond! I say, Mr. Bond! Catch you later, perhaps. Right. In 1988, Valerie's husband, Michael, would sadly pass away. Married life with Michael was rather different. He was a bit of an eccentric, but he was marvellous in many, many ways. When Michael died, uh, life was really difficult. The children were still young and, um, and it was hard. Um, in fact, it, it's, it's taken years to sort of uh, get back. I found myself doing um, jobs I wouldn't have expected to do because I wanted to uh, I wanted the children to finish their education as they'd started it and everything and um, so it wasn't easy. From the 1990s to the prison Valerie would continue to appear on stage. She would attend conventions and charity events and would make the odd TV appearance. Decisions. Ah, give over. I've been very, very lucky to um, to have been associated with three major British film cults. Um, of course, the Hammer films, the Carry On films, and the Bond. And uh, and I worked with both Roger Moore and Sean Connery. And um, and I, it's it's fantastic. It's opened so many doors, and I've gone all over the world. <laughs>